Now what we gotta do is create our first controller. Controllers are gonna be basically helping us build our single page application. So right here what we see is a bunch of code, a bunch of template related code that might be related to something else. Our controller is gonna help us with those relations. It's gonna make sense once we actually get into it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna open up um, inside of here, I'm gonna create a new folder called blog, blog dash list. So this is actually gonna be where our list of blog items are gonna exist. Now these each individual component, so this is kind of a component that's gonna be handling blog list, is gonna be self-contained. We wanna make it as small as possible because it's gonna be that one single unit that's gonna handle only our blog list. So we're gonna put it in this its own folder. Now, of course, this isn't the only way you can do it. You can absolutely put it all in one big JavaScript file and go nuts. But what we're gonna do is separate it out and make it nice little small pockets so that we can change any little individual thing at will and knowing that that's all we're touching. We're not touching anything else, which is really nice. So in here, we're gonna go ahead and make a couple new files. The first one, we're gonna call it blog-list.module.js, just like we did with the app we're doing with the blog list. The next thing we're gonna call it is blog-list.component.js. Okay, so inside of our app module, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that code and paste it into our blog list module. And here, I'm just gonna do blog list. Do note the camel casing there, that actually is important. Um, and we'll see what that does here shortly, or at least in the next few videos. But right here, we're just declaring the module just like we've done before. And then now in the component, we can actually use this exact same thing here, paste it in, get rid of this stuff, and do dot component. And we can call this blog list. And then we can do some stuff in here. But before we actually call it component, I'm actually gonna call it controller. And this is gonna be taking in a function and it's gonna do some stuff in here for us. And all I'm gonna do is console log hello. And that's it. So a very specific reason to why I'm doing this is because I wanna show you something. And that is going back into the index, we might wanna put in here some sort of div that controls various things. So I'll do div class. Well, I'm gonna make it an empty class and I'll just do ng controller. And I'm gonna put it equal to some sort of controller. In this case, I wanna actually name the controller here and I'm gonna name it blog list controller. And I'll put a comma there. So blog list controller, I'm gonna make sure it's all capitalized. Um, so each word is capitalized. So blog list controller, go back into the index and call this one blog list controller and we'll close off the div, okay? So before I run into anything more here, I wanna make sure I link in the blog list stuff. So let's go ahead and copy that first line from the module and we're gonna add in the blog list data here. So blog list, there we go. Gonna go ahead and copy that one, paste below and component. All right, so of course that's just linking in these two files here, not a big deal. Now that we've got this and we have our module and component, of course I always save things so I just constantly get in the habit of uh, command S if you're on Mac and control S if you're on Windows. So I just constantly am saving all of these files and now back into the app module. Now we can actually put in blog list inside of those brackets there, just like that. That's all we have to do. Especially because now it's on our actual index file things are looking good, we have our blog list, and what we should see when we refresh the page now is something saying hello. So let's go back into our terminal and refresh, and now in our console we see hello. If I refresh, it says hello. Cool, so that means that I can do some stuff with this controller. And that is, I'm gonna add in this parameter called scope. Notice that there's a dollar sign in front of it, and scope allows me to do some cool stuff. So if I do scope.title, and I'll just say hi there. Scope will allow me to add in my own context variables into the blog list controller, which of course is what's going on right here. So I can just put in the curly brackets again and do title, save it, 
and refresh, I now see that I have title here. It's a little bit jumbled because of some of our other stuff, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all this. I don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna go ahead and add an H1 with the class of new class in here. And now we've got our blog list controller. Of course, there's other things that I can do, which is such as set a button. So let's do a button. I'll just do button and I'll say, click me and we'll close off this button. And so with the button, we'll want to have some sort of click event, some sort of function that actually works when we do this button. And we can do that by just doing ng dash click and some sort of function. So let's say, for instance, I'll just say some click test, parentheses, some click test, cool. Not that big of a deal. Now, since I called some click test, I can actually go back into my controller and make a function for it by using scope dot sum click test equals to a function and I'll console log clicked. In fact, I'll also change scope dot title to clicked. All right, so we saved it. Notice we got that ng click there, save everything, of course. Refresh in here, click it, and it clicked. And if I keep clicking, notice it does it down there. In fact, I can be even smarter and say scope.clicks equals to zero. And then down here, I'll do scope.clicks plus equals to one. Okay, refresh again. And oh, let's actually add clicks into that title. Um, and I'll do this this way. Scope.clicks plus title, clicked. And then I'll do scope.clicks plus times. Notice I have spaces with the actual string text that we're doing here. Refresh and we click and it's showing us really cool stuff. So this is where you want a controller. So this actually um, handles how the template views things. So it, it controls it, right? That's essentially what it is doing. Um, and this controller is, well, it's okay. It's actually not that good because we now have our template text inside of our index.html. It starts to get probably a little bit jumbled there. So what I can do is actually cut that out and go back into our component and change it from being a controller to being an actual component. By doing that, we say component, of course, and we give it the same sort of name or a similar name, and I'll just call it blog list this time. And this also this time I'll put curly brackets. And now I don't have to name the controller, I can just say controller, and we can put a function here. And that function is gonna be the same as the one below, so I'll copy and paste that in a second. But I can also put a template and I can put HTML template or HTML code actually in this template. But we don't wanna work with the spaces right now. I'm just gonna make it one long HTML code thing. We will definitely worry about that later. But for now I have this template and make sure that I have this comma at the end um, because we're doing curly brackets. So it's kind of a, a dictionary there. And we've got our function. So now what we can do is actually copy all of our controller stuff Go ahead and paste that in. And inside of this function, we're gonna pass in that scope again, just like what we did last time. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tab some of this stuff in. And this right here, I'm gonna go ahead and comment out. We no longer need it, but I'm keeping it there so you guys can use it for reference later. But this should close off everything. But now that we've got this, we can do our own directive, and that is blog-list. Close off, blog dash list. There we go, we save it, we refresh. Ah, we got some errors here, and we got function not defined. Blog list controller is not defined. It is a function, but it's not defined. So let's go back in. Let's see what's going on here. And that's this right here, our template. Remember, we copied and pasted it. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that, save it, and we will refresh in here. Hi there, I click it, still works. Okay. So we covered a lot. If you are confused at all, that's okay. That's actually good 
because we will come back and do something like this a lot because all we did here was a list component. But the main things here is, first of all, yes, you can just define a controller, but that is not as robust as it could be. Secondly, we could make it where our templates are written right inside of the component itself. So notice this is completely self-contained. There's nothing else that needs to be added or changed to this. If I want to change the class here, I could do that no problem for the template and I can change the functionality. So I can change how it functions and how it looks right in one file, simply, easily. It's really cool. Now, the other side of this is the fact that with our other controller, yes, there's ways around doing this, but making it a component allows us to do this. So we can actually put it anywhere. Now you might be wondering, how do we name this component? How did it come out to blog dash list? I told you I was gonna come back to this. Well, when we come into the component here, this actually changes it to blog dash list. The name of the component is how it changes. So if I said some list here, then I would have to come back and, and, and change this to some dash list dash here. And that's how that would actually work. My blog list wouldn't work anymore. We refresh some list here does. Okay. If I change it back, save it, refresh, it goes away. Nothing even shows up, but there's also no errors, which is also cool. So let's keep it as blog list. And that's that, right? We've got our component. We've created our blog list component. This is really cool. It's all self-contained. We are missing some things and some functionality to this, but I also showed you how to do some variables um, and all that. So if you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.